There's another elephant in the room, and you raise it in your book. Another one. Um, suicide in the workplace. Yes. There was a scene in a very famous movie called Network by Sidney Lumet, and had the, um, the, act, the Australian actor Peter Finch, and he said very famously, I'm mad as hell, and I'm not going to take it anymore. And that became a, uh, a catch cry. And it was a huge speech in depth and length and emotional commitment. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, his ability as an actor was, boy, it was on show. He did it in one take. They started to do a second take, but they had to abandon it because he had heart problems. Oh, he was getting too worked up. He'd, and he had very serious heart problems. And there he was at work over overextending his, his physical abilities. Mm -hmm. So thankfully, they stopped shooting. He ended up getting an Academy Award for that one take, but he got it posthumously. You could go on and talk about the, the uh, astounding irony of that particular workplace situation. Mm. Or you could talk about Apocalypse Now, where Martin Sheen, uh, legendarily, went, his character went mad at the end of the movie and he, and he got uh, accolades and awards for it. But during the shooting of that, they had to cart him off to hospital. Uh, of course, in Network, the character shoots himself live on camera, which was considered overstating things a little bit by all the critics at the time, and it was considered a black comedy, until years later that very thing actually happened. And Sidney Lumet and Paddy Chayefsky famously said at the time, this is not satire, this is real life. In your book, you have this amazing figure saying that somebody takes their own life every 40 seconds around the world. That's an astounding statistic. And whether it's 40 seconds or 40 minutes or once every 40 days, yeah. you can't close the door after the horse has bolted. It's True. a classic case of too little too soon. Mm. Mm -hmm. So what sort of research has been done about suicide in the workplace? The research on suicide in the workplace continues. A Victorian study found that about 17% of the suicides in that state, 17% were due to problems in workplace. So that, that's still very high. I mean, 40, for, uh, a suicide every 40 seconds around the world is huge. Um, yet, 80, 75% to 80% of those are men. So we have a huge problem with suicide and male suicide. Um, and, you know, one suicide is too many regardless of gender. But what can we do in the workplace? Obviously, people are not happy. You know, that is something that we get from people. They're not satisfied in the workplace. And one of the reasons why they're not satisfied is because they, they're not connecting with the purpose of their workplace and the, workplace, uh, the, the purpose of their lives. And a person without purpose, it's like a ship without a rudder. It's, it's aimless. It's not going anywhere. And to be aimless for a human being is not a good thing. Workplace is actually good for your mental health. You know, that's the irony. It, when, we, when we put a person with a mental health issue in, a, in, a work, in, a, in, in work that is, is significant and it contributes back to the community, we see a better recovery overall. So it's good for your mental health. And yet, if, if you don't manage to connect to the values and the vision of the workplace um, on, in your team, then you remain disengaged. And that's when the danger starts, because suicide doesn't happen in community, it happens in isolation. Suicide is decided in your head, not in a collective. Mm -hmm. Some people that suicide take a collective with them, but the decision is individual. So we can do a lot in workplaces to turn that around as managers. Is, that's why I say Mental Wealth, the book, is a leadership book because it teaches managers how to lead their teams so they're connected with, with something meaningful. One of the things that, that I see in, in talking with so many organizations is that sometimes there can be the attitude like if people have personal problems, they should leave that at home. Um, and if, if someone takes their life, well, it wasn't our, it wasn't our fault and it wasn't our responsibility. And, and, and that's right. Ultimately, you know, people take actions themselves. Having said that, there's still an impact on the business. So when we go around and we and deliver training internationally, one of the questions we'll often ask is, you know, just for a show of hands, how many people know someone who has taken their life? And 
you'll normally get 75, 80% of the room say, yes, I know someone. And yet it's something we don't talk about every day. So all of, not just the person who's taken their life, but all of their colleagues is, are gonna be impacted as well. So it's quite common for us to hear from organizations who perhaps have delayed you know, doing anything in the space of mental health and then they contact us and say, oh, we, we wish we'd come to you sooner because now we've had to shut down operations for days, weeks, months sometimes because everybody's reacting to this incident that's happened. Yeah. You know? and, and we don't know, we're out of our depth. We, we don't know really how to handle this. You know? it's, we like to keep our boxes of work is here and home is separate, but in reality, people aren't They're like that. They do, other. they impact on each other. Yeah. So we've got to look at the whole person, the whole employee. And it's not just frontline, it can be very high level people as well. That yeah, and talking about an employee, yeah. just to every single individual, how much responsibility do they have to take, do we have to take as people for our own workplace mental health? A hundred percent. I. I believe that um, no one cares about your life as much as you do, period. Now, are there caring people around us that we can, act, we, can, we can connect with and they can help us? Absolutely, they're there. Do they care 100% about your life? They do, but they can only care as much as you let them. So that's an important thing. I see a lot of emphasis on stopping suicide. I think that's the wrong focus. What we need to focus is how do we connect with people? How do we make people happy? So happy, they don't want to die. People just want to die because they're not happy. Suicide is a symptom, it's not a problem. It's a, it's a very fatal symptom. But you know, the problem is people are not happy. Connected people, happy people don't want to kill themselves. So that's why we're going to go back. We've got to go back to the basics. And this is why I like workplaces. Workplaces, sure, they're artificial. We come together in an artificial way but it, they're highly social workplaces. We can, we, in, in some workplaces, I've seen them operate almost like a family. They can't wait to go to work. I've seen most workplaces, that doesn't happen. But you know, in some teams, they love each other. They, they're, they're there for each other. They've got each other's back. And how do you create that? And yet that's, that's, the, that's also the, always changing as well, yeah. because there will be that group dynamic will shift and people will come and people will leave. And, and then that can... And it's up to the manager to sustain that to know how to talk to people, to know when to talk to people, to know what to say, to what not to say, uh, what to do, because sometimes people won't talk, but they'll do. Okay, so how much can a, a workplace uh, actually support a team member who's suffering mental health? How far can they go? Yeah, that's a good question. And that's one that a lot of the managers mm -hmm. have as well. And it's, it's really important that they know the limits of their capability as well. We're not upskilling people to be counsellors or psychologists or therapists or anything like that, even though some of them might like to go that far. We can see that can be counterproductive as well. So it's really important they know where that line is. And that's things like identifying it in the first place as a human being, one person to another, having a conversation and showing care, showing compassion, as you spoke about earlier, uh, showing empathy, uh, sharing information about, you know, what are some of the options? Because it's not just a one size fits all solution when it comes to mental health. You know, everyone's situation is so completely different. You know, what works for one person may not work for someone else. So managers need to be really careful that they're not giving advice um, or, you know, what worked for me, um, but that they're opening up a conversation and, and allowing the person to go and get the support they need from wherever they need it. That they're, and they're, they're on the side as a, a go-to person if, if there's anything here in the workplace that, that may, I may be able to assist with. Can't promise the world, I can't do everything, but I'm here and we'll talk about it and let's keep that line of communication open. And it's amazing what people are able to do when we feel supported. Mm. You know, just to know someone's got our back, that sometimes that's all that is needed, you know, for each, that little bit extra energy. And that's, that's what we're talking about sometimes, you know, that, that energy to climb out of a hole. And sometimes, guess what? Once they find out that somebody has got their back, they find out there was no hole to begin with. They just had this idea in their head. Uh, that's what we find with conflict. When people get to talk to each other, they realize, oh, oh so you didn't mean that. 
oh, right, okay, so I've wasted two days of my life <laughs> making this huge problem in my head that has disappeared by a two-minute conversation. So we teach people how to have that conversation in, in the book as well.